Every day of the year, even before the sun rises over the port, the Bonito boats get ready to leave for the open sea. Over the past few decades, these Polynesian boats have replaced the pirogue. It's time for the Tarea brothers, the best Bonito fishermen in Polynesia, to begin their day. My name is Henri Tairea, but everyone calls me Blanc Blanc, the fisherman. I have been fishing for Bonito for about 14 years. My father taught me how. My day usually begins at 3 a.m. when we take to the pass. Legend has it that in the beginning, two brothers, Rory and Ratea, the island's guardians and protectors were transformed by Ruahatu, god of the sea, into Benitos. It all began when the two brothers, on their way back from fishing, decided to grill their fish on the beach. The fire, however, grew greedy and claimed other offerings. The brothers, in turn, jumped in, but in vain. As a last resort, they prayed to the god of the sky and the clouds, and suddenly, it began to rain. The fire went out, and the rain carried the brothers' ashes to the sea, where, in contact with the water, they were changed into bonitos. Fishing begins by observing the birds. You watch them carefully to determine in which direction they'll go and, and their way of flying. When we see gannets, we're 80% sure that they're heading for a school of bonito. When they beat their wings quickly or when they skim the water and don't turn around, it means they're heading for a school of bonito or tuna. The birds, like the bonito, feed on small fish or shrimp that live on the water's surface. They point the way for the two brothers to the schools of fish. Henri speeds up so as not to lose them. This is the equipment we often use for bonito fishing. It's traditional and typically Polynesian. To make a fishing nacre like this one, you need a stiff steel wire and a nacre that I prepare myself. The nacre is round when it comes out of the water. I trim it and tie it on. When we throw it into the water to fish for bonito, it wriggles. The nacre has to move a lot under the water to attract the bonito. And how well it works depends on the color and on what you put on the outside. Some use black, others white, it depends on the fisherman. The nacre is carved to look like a man's body, with arms as long as the body and a rounded torso, since to catch bonito, who have always been considered to be feminine, they must first be seduced. The value of a nacre is determined by its color and its longevity. Blanc Blanc inherited several from his father. As an experienced fisherman, however, he has made others, since according to their color, some are more effective on rainy days and others only at sunrise. As soon as the boat reaches the school of fish, Henri and Warren go into action, using the same gestures as their ancestors did. By experience, the boat is positioned in the rear, facing the school. According to legend, the fish, guided by a leader, move in the same direction as the wind, they feed themselves by jumping on prey swimming on the surface. The nacre lures are skillfully guided to the top of the water, attracting the bonito like magnets. 
When the bonito hunts, it goes either to this side or to the other. When it bites, we strike it and raise it up. Once on its way towards the boat, we slacken the line so that it detaches itself. And we don't have to detach it once it's on the boat. It also prevents the nacre from breaking when it falls on the deck. Tika Pana Pana is an extremely physical kind of fishing, which consists of striking and then quickly removing the fish from the water. These fish only stay on the surface long enough to eat, and so you have to be very fast. Tradition requires one to fish for bonito standing up as a sign of virility and elegance. The fish are rare, and the initial morning gesture is not very precise. The bonito have just dived down. Blanc Blanc takes advantage of this moment to adapt his pole and his nacre to the situation, since the light has now changed. Judging by the flight of the gannets, the two brothers know that this morning the birds will lead them to a school of cote cote, small bonito weighing about 15 kilograms. From the beginnings of bonito fishing, the men have always found bamboo poles to be the most effective. They come from the steep valleys of the island and grow on the edge of old volcanoes. We gather bamboo two, three times a year. We use it because it's light, it's rigid, and still it's supple. Good quality bamboo can last a year. Others only last three to six months. To make good bonito poles, the bamboo should not be too yellow or too green. They should be at least five centimeters in diameter and five to eight meters long. It's hard work. In addition to the mosquitoes, the steep slopes make it difficult to get a firm grip. The pole's length is checked using one's arms, making it possible to immediately eliminate the excess since afterwards they have to be carried. The fatter the bonito, the shorter the poles. Five meter poles are therefore ideal for catching pana pana, bonito weighing about 30 kilograms. <laughs> The bamboo is sorted into two groups, 
those which pull to the left and those which pull to the right. Since Henri and Warren fish side by side, using poles from both groups enables them to get the bonito out of the water without hindering one another. The two brothers leave the forest, each with 50 kilograms of bamboo on his shoulders. The birds indicate the presence of a large school of bonito with striped bellies. Blanc Blanc has succeeded in finding its exact area of passage. Armed with their longest bamboo poles, they launch their floating nacre at these legendary Polynesian fish. They must constantly check the speed and the directions of the fish so as not to lose them. In less than half an hour, they can catch a hundred or so. Fishing is good today. 70 bonito will be sold as soon as the boat reaches the port. This is why Warren guts and cleans them carefully. The bonito must be eaten the day it's caught. The elders claim that the entrails should never be thrown back into the high seas, since it would frighten the bonito away for good. Dozens of skate fish await the return of the Benito boats. They recognize the noise of the boat's diesel engines. As soon as the innards are thrown overboard, the skate jump on them like dogs after a hunt, creating a stunning ballet. A day of fishing comes to a close at the little port of Waine. Blanc Blanc uses a conch as a megaphone to call prospective customers. Meanwhile, Warren cleans the new poles with a machete to remove all the splinters and rough spots which could cause injury during tomorrow's fishing. When customers don't come to him, Blanc Blanc goes around the island looking for them. Two old timers come to help him, since he has to sell the fish before nightfall, two hours from now. Like rural food delivery trucks in western countries, they scour the entire island, announcing their arrival with the conch, a Polynesian shellfish which is becoming extinct. 
The two old men make the sales pitch to attract customers. The bonito has been the basis of Polynesian cuisine for centuries. A pair of bonito sells for a thousand Pacific francs, about ten dollars, but they are also used in exchange for services rendered. This time, the birds guide the fishermen to a school of large bonito, the panapana, which weigh about 30 kilograms. Even before reaching the school, Blanc Blanc knows that it will take two fishermen if they don't want to break their poles or lose their nacre. He therefore fixes a single line to their two bamboo poles. Their movements must be perfectly synchronized. If not, they will lose the fish or their nacre. In less than two hours, in the heart of a school and with movements precise to the millimeter, Blanc Blanc and his brother can take more than a ton of fish out of the water. The screeching of the reel is the sign that a tuna has been struck. Blanc Blanc is a true jack of all trades and constantly goes from steering the boat to fishing with the tiller to his right and the accelerator behind him. It's a yellow fin, easy to recognize. The nacre lures are replaced by plastic squid. In this case, contrary to bonito fishing, modern tools are used. The importance of tradition is less present in tuna fishing, although for the two brothers, tuna is a gift from heaven, since they know that the Chinese who run the local supermarket will give them a good price for their catch. At night, Blanc Blanc and Warren's wives prepare the bonito for dinner which more often than not is eaten raw with a spicy sauce. Mm. 
Originally from the island of Fa and Bonito fishermen for generations, Henri and Warren came to Waïne to get married. Henri used to be a tuna boat captain, and his savings enabled he and his brother to build his house and his boat. At night, on the Société Archipelago, the sea once again becomes the realm of invisible creatures who for centuries have engendered fascinating legends which the Polynesian fishermen enjoy sharing. <laughs> 